What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Crypto Kindness channel. My name is Jeff. In today's video, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use a limit order to purchase or sell cryptocurrency. Now, real quick, it's important to know that I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in my videos is financial advice. I'm simply providing you with a tutorial on how to use the DeFi protocols. Invest in whatever cryptocurrencies you want to. Any of the cryptos that I use in today's example, it's not an endorsement for those. It's just simply what I happen to be using. Always do your own research, not your keys, not your coins. Be safe out there. So it's important to know, though, there are three pointers that are important to know about using limit orders, which I'll touch base on those at the end of the video. So stick around. It's not going to be a very long video. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right. So as I mentioned, we're over here at matcha.xyz. And we're going to go ahead and connect our wallet very simply. I got a MetaMask wallet. You'll see the steps of what that looks like. And we are ready to roll. So go over to Start Trading. And you can see here there's Market or there's Limit. Um, as soon as I go over Limit, you see this Xbox that says una Unavailable on ETH-based pairs. You can use WETH or it's actually a lot easier to just use USDC. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of this. And for the sake of this limit order, I'm going to put in uh, Zen Crypto. Now, interestingly enough, Zen Crypto is not pre-populated. So very quickly, I'm going to go over to the Zen.network website. I'm going to click on their contract, which takes me to Etherscan. I'm going to click on the contract address, bring it back over to Matcha, and populate that in. And we'll add it to our token here. So, okay. So now we've got, we're going to be buying Zen. Um, I'm going to choose my USDC. Okay. So that was an easy one for me. But if you wanted to or, um, enter a different token, another place you could go is to, um, you know, one of the coin ranking websites. You could go to Nomics or you could go to Coin Market Cap. Um, these are all secure places to grab contract addresses from. So we could scroll down here just to give you an example. I know Shiba Inu is a ERC20 or an Ethereum token. So I click on Shiba Inu. This is the main page on Nomics for Shiba Inu. And when you scroll down, you see the contract address right there. So you could either click the contract address and copy it here, or you could go to the Etherscan, grab it from there. So you can copy the address here. We can come back into Matcha, and you could um, you know, copy and paste here. That brings up Shiba Inu. Uh, there's a lot of different places you can go to grab contract addresses. You want to make sure you're using a trusted resource. And the um, larger coin ranking websites, again, Nomics or Coin Market Cap, Coin Gecko, or any of those will work for that. So but let's go ahead and jump back into Zen as our example. And now I'm going to go to the limit. This limit order allows me to uh, pick the price I want to pay and then walk away, which is nice. So for uh, $5, um, this is how much I would buy currently, but I want to change that price to, uh, I'm going to say, one nine. And now you can see that increase the amount of Zen I get expires in. There's one hour. There's a couple different options here. Seven days, three days, depends on how you know much of a hurry you're in. But uh, for the sake of example, I'm just going to go ahead and hit 24 hours here. And this tells me exactly how much Zen I'll be getting if this executes. I'm going to hit review limit order. And here's where it says, we need permission to use your USDC. Because you are setting a limit order that's not going to trigger right now, you need to give Matcha permission to come into your wallet and extract that USDC when that uh, price actually hits. So you're giving them permission to come back into your wallet. So you hit approve. There is a small gas fee to do this. As you can see, my screen is coming up. It's currently $3.76, which tells me it weighs a little bit high. I'm going to reject this because I don't actually need to place this limit order. But that's the process in which you wanted to do it. Now, what happens if you wanted to sell? Simply flip-flop these. So we hit the button. And now I, I have, I'm um, selling Zen, which it tells me I have none in my wallet, of course. This amount of Zen for $5 USDC. And again, you can change that. So let's say the price, um, you want to sell it at a higher price. So we would just change that to you know, 0.03 or something like this. So you can buy Zen at a low price and then 
flip it around and sell it at a high price. Again, that's not financial advice to do so. This is simply how you use these limit orders. So that is it. It's pretty straightforward. And now the nice thing about Matcha.xyz is that you can do this on any chain. You can flip this to BSC, Polygon, AVAX, Phantom, and so on and so forth down the list. So it doesn't matter where you hold your Zen crypto or whatever particular token you want to sell, whether it's Hex or Uni or whatever have you, Matcha.xyz allows you to do that. You can also do the same thing in um, other DEXs like One Inch or uh, you know, there's a bunch of them out there. I'm using matcha because I live in the United States. And if you live in the States, you're not allowed to use uh, one inch, of course. There's a ways around that. I know we're not going to get into that right now. So that was a quick tutorial on how you can place uh, limit orders using matcha.xyz to sell your crypto. It's a beautiful thing to use limit orders because you don't have to always be looking at the charts. You don't have to be paying attention to gas costs or anything like that. You just put in your limit order and you walk away. And if it gets down to that point, it will trigger. Now, at the beginning of the video, I shared with you, there's three things you need to know about limit orders. Um, the first thing is, is that in order for these to be a gas-free transaction, when you put in a limit order, when that triggers, you don't pay a gas fee, which is really nice, but it also kind of limits a, a little bit. And let me explain. Um, it's not like the stock market where like the second the price of the um, asset hits your limit price, boom, it triggers. It doesn't work like that. In order for it to be a gas-free transaction, there has to be profit in it for the exchange. So usually the price needs to dip a little bit below your limit price and stay there for a little while, 20 minutes, half hour, hour, something like this, in order for your price to trigger because there needs to be profit in it for them. So if the price of gas fees are really high, it might not trigger even though it gets below your limit price. So keep that in mind. Just because you have a limit order doesn't mean it's going to execute. Number two is um, it doesn't always fill the entirety of your order. So if you wanted 10,000 tokens, um, it's only able to buy what's available on the market at that particular time. So you might get one that only um, fills 50% or 20% or 90%. Um, just because you put in the limit order and it triggers doesn't mean it's going to be completely filled. So that's another thing you need to consider. What doesn't fill will still remain open and could fill at another later time. But you know that's just dependent upon market conditions. And last but not least is the size of your limit order does matter. Now, this is not financial advice, but I'm just going to tell you my experience. Usually limit orders, $250 and higher, have a higher likelihood of triggering than anything lower than that. And the reason why is because you're not going to be the only one setting a limit order at any given strike price. So for the sake of this example, if you wanted to buy, let's say, um, hex at two cents. There's a lot of other people that have a limit order in for hex at two cents. And how it's going to work is the largest limit order is filled first, and then the second and third and fourth and fifth. So um, the smaller your limit order, the less likely it is to be filled. The larger it is, the more likely it is to be filled because they just fill them as they go. Um, and it's, there's more profit in it for the exchange to fill large orders than smaller orders. So it's important to know those three things. Again, nothing in this video is financial advice. I'm just sharing with you my experience and what I've seen work. So um, with that being said, I'm pretty sure I've covered everything. Thank you for being here today and have a wonderful day.